G'day, my name is Daryl Webb and today we're going to have a look at the All Powers SP033 um, foldable solar panel. Um, this was a pretty good little thing that actually happened for me. I've been slowly setting up uh, my vehicle, setting up the vehicle for when I go camping but also for work. You would have seen in some of my hunting videos and I use a little oven and cook up pies. Um, I just decided to mount some things in that I need all the time. So I've added a fridge in there. I bought one specifically for the right size. I've added a set of drawer or a drawer with a table on it. I've added some water system so I can um, have water to wash my hands in that when I'm using chemicals. And um, in the process of doing that, I added a bigger lithium battery. Um, and I needed a way to keep it all charged up. Um, if you want to watch a video about all this stuff, let me know in the comments and I'll make a video about it because I still haven't finished it, there's still more to come. There's a big inverter. Now that the lithium battery is so good, I've got like a, uh, a kettle, a 240 volt kettle, a small one. Um, I've got an air fryer. Um, I might do a little bit of induction cooking, things like that. But uh, this video is about the All Powers SP033. And I was really happy to pick that up because the one I've already chosen to use was an All Powers SP033. Um, quick couple of things I'll say about it is that uh, it makes decent wattage in the shade and um, it does cope with the heat very well so that one suited me hey, it's a really good price too for what these are anyway so I'll open that one up and see what you get in there let's have a look at that and then we'll do uh, test it all I've got to let my battery get down a bit it's too full but uh, I'll run some things we'll give it a good test out and we'll see what kind of amps we get on a day that's like a typical day that's Australia time, summertime. It's like 34 degrees, and it's overcast, and it's sunny. And we'll see how all that goes. We'll test it and let you guys check it all out and see what you think. All right, so we'll just look at some of its specs and what it's on their website. So this is their just their global website. Um, you can see there it's priced in uh, 229 US dollars. Um, sort of see some of its stuff there. So it's. Uh, down the green road down the middle there. Peak power is 200 watts. Solar energy conversion rate 22%. Open circuit voltage 22.2 volts. Short circuit current 12 amps. Power voltage 18 volt. Um, that's an important one because you'll find most of your solar panels that you get for uh, um, you know vehicles and that, that are based around 12 volt, their power point is usually around that 18 volts. So if you uh, have a caravan or a car that already has an existing solar on the roof and you want to run them through the same um, solar regulator, then you can plug this in. They should be pretty compatible with most panels as they are around that 18 volt. Um, it's got MC4 connectors, so its unfolded size is 2,230 millimeter, and its folded size is 650 millimeter um, by 515 millimeter, and the weight 6.3 kilos. And it's showing you the different types of connectors and whatnot on it. Yeah, the peaks works on the solar cell. I said it is a polycrystalline panel. There you go, you can uh, do like I've done to them and uh, put them up in, uh, wire them up in either in series or parallel. It's showing you there again comes with it. And also there is an instruction manual. But yeah, that's sort of, um, sort of it. You can download the manual from their site. And there's uh, sort of all those specs again. I said that the uh, maximum power voltage um, at 18 volt there right in the center of the screen that's a good one because I said most of your 12 volt panels or stuff made for 12 volt systems they're usually around um, that 20 something open circuit voltage low 20 and their power point power voltage is usually around 18 volts now it might be 17 and a half it might be 18 and a half not to 19 but uh, at least they are semi compatible there and that's it okay when you receive this it just comes in some down to the packaging and it's a four panel bowl bifold solar you know like a well, four, four panel and it's got these little legs that uh, you know I can lean up against and angle it to the sun um, these things are aimed at obviously people doing what I'm doing but also it's aimed at people who have portable power stations so in here the connection for the panel straight out right is just your MC4s, which is a pretty standard, industry standard for solar panels. Um, but you also get, because as I said, this is made for doing lots of different things, um, you've got a mini Anson plug, the MC4, so you can hook up to power stations that need that. Um, there is also MC4s to a straight DC socket. 
again just straight to a, a DC socket and with that DC socket, DC socket is uh, more importantly there's a whole heap of adapters um, to shoot suit different power stations um, from what I can tell I haven't used really many of those power stations before I've sort of made my own but uh, all the bought ones now big lithium watt hours and whatnot you've got all these different little connectors on them and they pretty much just go straight onto this one and all of a sudden you, you can suit different types so I think it's made for multi brands you know because there's quite a few brands around now and like a lot of things they like to do things their own way so they've got different connectors but in this kit you get pretty much everything oh and also in there there is a MC4 to alligator clips I'm a bit dubious about this one if you clip it straight onto a 12 volt panel of battery would it charge it yep if you left it too long would it blow it up yes because it'll over voltage you really want a regulator in between so this one doesn't have a regulator that's actually a good thing because i like to choose my own regulator today for these tests i've got a little uh renergy rover elite 40 amp dc to dc char uh, mppt charger so um we'll hook it up into that uh, but first of all i will modify this um like i did the other one i um i'll put a red uh, Anderson plug on there for a direct input into the car. I've got red Anderson plugs so you can't actually in confuse for raw, raw solar we're going to. So we'll do that now and then we'll set it up and see how it goes. Yeah, just before I start soldering this now, I'll just sort of show you. Yeah, so these are these connections. So you've got MC4s to the Mini Anderson. Set MC4s to alligator clips. That's still handy, you can make joiners and whatever out of that. And um, this little MC4 MC4s to just a DC outlet. And then you've got these different type plugs on here that go straight on this so you can charge pretty much anything. Um, those those battery packs have their own inbuilt uh, solar regulators, so that's why it's designed this way. So I just exposed their wire. According to this, it's um, two and a half millimeter squared, so that's heaps of current for what this panel puts out that carry the current well. So I've gone some three millimeter square, two meters of that. Now I'll put a red Anson plug on the other end there, so I can just plug it straight directly into. Uh, the uh, the outlet but for these I've just verified positive and negative with the multimeter and the red one's positive it actually says it inside the panel too and um, the one with no red o-ring on there is negative so I'll just solder these guys up and uh, street shrink them or tape them and we'll get on to putting the Anderson plug on now obviously just remember for most people you're not going to need to do this you can also buy a patch lead to do this to go from um, MC4 to uh, whatever your favourite connection style is. Alright, once you sort of get your orientation for your clips right, I want those noses down. I'll do negative first. Just um, so you don't have to twist them around too hard. It makes life a bit easier. Yeah, that's going. Now you can crimp these of course. I like to solder things. Um, with normal connections, I crimp them and solder them. I haven't got a crimp big enough for crimping these. Well, not crimping them properly anyway. You can do it with pliers and that, but that's a bit rugged. Yeah, so I've connected the uh, the three mil lead up to the uh, panel. A little bit more solder than that. And um, check this polarity. Yes, it's definitely right. Pretty much feel that right to the tip is up high with solder with flux and then dip that baby in hold it there for a second let it cool yeah this one's a bit wobbly just hold him there let him sit anyway um, we've got a bit of light drizzle a bit of rain happening and um, it stops and starts of course and it's about um, probably approaching six o'clock so it's probably not great solar conditions now but um, I might give them a quick setup and see what uh, summertime six o'clock with overcast sky and raining what type of watts we can get out of them and then um, and then hopefully we'll get another nice sunny day in the next few days and we'll see how they go in full sun there you go so they're right they're correctly orientated so now I just gotta push them in that's that all right so how I've sort of found to do this is um put his back leg out. This is a 
pretty simple way of doing it. This is one of the things that I like about it. I like about it. Let's pull it out. Hold it over. Pull it out. Roll it over. And pull it out. And roll it over. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, so as you can see, it's just done on these legs. And you just got a bit of um, elastic there, so it lets them not go too far. And they go down and they hold on with velcro. So it's really simple. Um, so the only thing is when you're moving it, they do want to spring in. So sometimes you have to be a little bit uh, like an octopus and get all your hands having it at one. But uh, ah, that's a small bit of practice. I didn't find it too hard. And um, the way I fold it out and fold the leg and fold it out, um, works really good and then on here I've just got um, I've got an extension lead that's in um, six millimeter square so I don't really suffer with bugger or voltage drop I've got I think five meter extension lead two meters on here you know so seven meters of um, extension but it's good because the vehicle can be in the shade and you can get your panels out in the sun um, now what else can I say about it uh, all the material seems good and the stitching seems good. The legs are quite solid. I don't think they're going to wear out. I've been using the other one for over a month now. It pretty much did me right through Christmas and New Year's. It copped um, rain. It copped uh, temperatures up 38 degrees. And um, it seemed to do just fine. The panels do get a little tiny bit baggy when it's super hot. Um, but it nothing to, to stress about. There's also these little loops tied on. One at each end and one in the middle so you can hang it off cars and things like that or strap it down to the ground, peg it down to the ground if it's really windy, flat. Um, all in all, build quality and everything seems quite nice. Alright, so here it is plugged in. It's uh, it's just an early evening. Um, well, it's like early evening because the sky is completely overcast, so you can see that. Now I've just got the one panel plugged in. We're going around in the back of the car and we'll see what that is making. Um, well, you might not be able to see that, but I'll... Out of focus. It's making 1.7 amps. That's really good for a completely overcast day. We'll need some sun now and then we'll see how it really goes. And I can put two of them together. Well, they're sitting there on... Uh, 22.4 amps. I've seen it get up to about uh, 24 amps. So that's about 12 amps a panel, which is about 150 watts. That's uh, really, really good. Um, yeah, we're just getting some shade now, some shadow coming back in. I'll just show you where I've got them sitting out. That in focus. So it's got two of them there together in parallel. That's my old one that I've been using for a fair while now. Old, tried and tested. And that's the new one. So yeah, they're just in parallel together, and um, I see what it's getting now. Yeah, the sun, sun's behind going behind the cloud. We're still getting um, nearly five amps with overcast, so uh, pretty respectable. All right, time to do some uh, pros and cons and a conclusion. But it is Australia, eh? and it is about uh, half past five in the afternoon. I better do the Australian thing and have a beer. So, cheers, happy Australia Day. Pros and cons of it. <clears throat> we'll start off with cons, because I found the cons to be a really easy one. I couldn't sort of find anything major. Um, even if I was trying to find it to be a little bit nitpicky, I'm still struggling to find anything that I'd call genuine cons. Um, I've seen on some of the early models, the earlier renditions of this, the leg used to be a bit thinner. They used to go on with like um, little press studs and that. And people used to say the legs were flimsy, but obviously that's not a problem anymore. The legs are about twice as fat and it's all stitched on and velcroed on. So <clears throat> I can't really genuinely find any cons. Um, let's go on to pros. <clears throat> Alright, so the form factor. The fact that you just undo these two clips and um, stand on its edge and flip the leg out. Flip the leg out, flip the leg out. Um, it makes it super, super fast to uh, set up. So, I mean way faster. I can set this up and pack it back up quicker than I could put a bag on my old bi bifold, you know, glass top um, folding solar panels. So, if they're quick to set up, you're going to use them more. 
Um, <clears throat> these are a polycrystalline panel. Um, yeah, everyone goes for monocrystalline these days. You know, that's meant to be the, you know, that's the, the, the tech leading stuff, the monocrystalline. Um, I've had no dramas with it being polycrystalline. Uh, outputs are pretty good. The efficiency is meant to be down compared to poly to monocrystalline. So in theory, these panels are maybe a tiny bit bigger. But in this form factor, this size to be uh, 200 watts. Like, I mean, that's it in the car, and, and you know, look how thin it is. I carry two of these now, and having two of them together is still smaller than my old 120 bifold set. You know, with the glass panels. Um, so that's probably about it for. Uh, like construction and size and everything like that, it's all just massive pros. Um, the stitching all feels good. There's no real, I didn't see in the one I purchased myself or the one that All Power sent me, I didn't see any, um, you know, there's no loose threads or stitching, all the little loops. So if you want to hang it up or peg it down, they all seem to be very good. Everything about it just seems nice. It feels like a, a more expensive product than it is. And that's the last big pro. Um, it's price. Um, you have to shop around for them a bit, I guess. I'll put a link in the description to uh, the All Power site. Um, but I've seen these down, you know, they have their little sales and things like that. I've seen these down to, in Australian dollars, down to, you know, nearly a, a dollar a watt. Um, so a dollar a watt, uh, that's at a pretty budget end of it. Um, but it performs really well, as you've seen. You know, overcast, I sort of get a couple of amps out of it, you know, in full, full shape, um, full, fully overcast day. And then when it's in um, full sun, I'm getting sort of 12 amps. Um, when the weather gets hotter, really hot, I see it go down to about 9. Um, but besides that, that's all good. Um, good outputs. So, all right, uh, conclusion. Uh, who do I think needs these? Anyone who just wants to uh, set up and stay in one area. Um, if you're driving around every day, it's pretty easy. Your car charges your battery, but if you want to stay somewhere for a few days and run things like um, 240 volt kettles or um, anything else on your inverters and fridges, you need to put the power in another way. These guys at their uh, compact size and their output, I think, are a good good fit and uh, and they're pretty affordable. Anyway, uh, I guess I'll leave it at that. I'll put a link into the description um, where you can find these. I'll put a couple of links where, where you can see maybe where they have their sales and things like that. And then. Um, it's up to you guys if, you, if you're looking for something like that. Anyway, on that note, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more stuff like this, hit the subscribe button. And I'll catch you later. Bye for now.